I'm in. Great, thanks. Hey. Great to have so many people online this morning. We've got some great panelists, so I'm glad you're here to hear firsthand their stories. You just can't beat someone else's experience on their funding journey if you're about to embark on it yourself or in the middle of it. <laughs> it's great to have that experience shared. Yeah, just people trickling in. So if you have a minute to put in the chat where you're joining us from, I'd love to see where everybody is located. <clears throat> Burnaby, Vancouver, West End, Barrie, Ontario, Prince Edward County, Ontario, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, people on the island, in White Rock, Winnipeg. Fantastic. Wow. Very good. Enderby. Lovely. Courtney, Sam representing Courtney, Maple Ridge, oh, and Alice, you might have noticed Alice posted, south of France, how can we all be jealous? Welcome, so great to have you here, international audience and participants. So. All right, well, I'm now, so let's get started with introductions and uh, kick off. We want to have lots of time here. So welcome to the Fireside Chat, the funding puzzle, piecing together a growth plan. And just a minute. I'm sorry, it's not moving forward. <laughs> and it worked. There we go. Hello, my name is Melanie Roop, and I'm the Senior Director of Loans and Advisory Services with WeBC. I'm joining you today from the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. And I think it's important for all of us to be on that journey of reconciliation and learning more about the people who have been on these lands since time immemorial. I invite you to write in the chat the lands that you're joining us from. And if you don't know exactly, there's a great website, which uh, Jen can post in the chat, which is native-land.ca. And it's a great place to start your learning journey on Indigenous peoples. Um, we'd love for you to share with us topics that you'd like to hear about in future webinars so we can always continue to bring you relevant information. And we'll include a question in the feedback poll or email us in any time if there's specific topics that you'd like to hear about. If this is the first time that you are joining us at WBC, just here is on this slide, is an overview of the programs and services that we offer. So key is our business loans up to $150,000. Today we'll be talking about debt and WBC offers these loans to women who are starting, growing or buying a business. We also offer the wraparound support. So business advice with our experienced business advisors and Erin is joining us today as our entrepreneur in residence. We have skills development workshops like this one, uh, ongoing webinars that are available as recordings or live, um, mentoring connections, either peer mentoring or one-on-one. -on -one. We know that connecting an entrepreneur with an experienced mentor helps to shorten the time uh, in moving forward and building their business. And then a supportive community. So we hope that when you join us at WBC for our events and and connect with us that you know you're part of a supportive community where we can connect you with resources and you can also connect with each other through some of our programs. So today specifically we're focusing on capital, sources of capital and I I think we did this one um, some time ago and I had a call afterwards and someone said 
they, they set up a meeting with me and they wanted to know, okay, how should I put together my funding puzzle? What does it look like? And the answer is it's different for everybody. And that's why we have this panel here today uh, to share uh, the, the funding puzzle that they've put together, the different sources of funding that they used and how they put it together. And you'll see that each one is different. And so today we wanna learn from their experiences. Um, <clears throat> I will make sure that this um, slide goes out with the email so you don't have to read it all now. I just really tried to highlight here an overview of the different sources of capital. And there are others, but these are the main ones that people focus on. So thinking about your personal funds, and that is the money that you use to start your business. Um, you use this money to with your start ups expenses. Um, but you may start with a little or you may start with a lot. And one of the dangers that entrepreneurs tend to do is they don't they don't access other money such as a loan early enough and they start using credit card debt. And when you put things on a credit card, you've got a very high rate of interest. You often can't pay it off right away because you don't have revenue coming from the business. And so you run up your um, credit card debt, and then that negatively impacts your credit score, score, which makes it difficult to access other types of credit. So know what money you have available to start or invest in the business, and then look at how you can leverage that. So then we move on to uh, debt. And we say that debt is non-dilutive. And when we say non-dilutive, it means you're not selling shares or giving up any ownership. And you'll notice in this chart that the only one that is dilutive is equity funding, where you are giving up some shares in exchange for money, which allows you to increase the value in your business. So when you're looking at debt, there's two types of main debt to focus on. One is a line of credit. And we recommend if you can get a line of credit early in your business, um, it helps you to manage the day-to-day -day cash flow. So you may have to buy some supplies and then it takes um, you know, some time before you're able to convert it into revenue that then goes back in to pay down that line of credit. So it's just managing the cash flow from operations day-to-day -day versus a term loan, which for example, WBC does a five-year term loan. A term loan is used to buy something with a longer uh, lifespan, like a piece of equipment, um, like a vehicle or some leasehold improvements or hiring staff. Uh, some people use it for marketing, um, where you are going to invest in the business and then make payments over time. So knowing... Um, just which is the right type of debt. Um, for grants, grants is non-dilutive. Grants are available in areas where <clears throat> um, organizations and the government want uh, entrepreneurs to invest. So hiring, training, uh, going into new markets, exporting, um, research and development and innovation. And so if your business fits any of those areas, you may be able to get some grant funding. Um, and uh, we'll hear about how some of the founders have access grant funding. Um, equity funding, we are running a program on how to master the conversation with investors, which is, I uh, have Aaron talk about that a bit later, but that's a whole other area if you're looking to get um, investors in your business. And then the last one I, I don't want you to forget is the most important thing about building your business is build a great business. Build a business that has um, product market fit where you can find your target market, you, you are selling them uh, products and services that they're willing to pay for, and there's some repeat business where you can generate that ongoing regular recurring revenue. Um, and use the, the revenue from your customer to reinvest in the business. We can also ask for sometimes upfront payments, so payments in advance, or progress payments. So you're not having to put out all the money um, before you get the customers to support you. So that's just a very high level and a very quick overview. of, um, And this is uh, what you can use sort of to refer to um, when you're looking into the various sources of capital for your business. 
So let's dive into chatting with the panelists. And I'm really delighted to welcome our four panelists today. Um, first, we have, let's just find my little, um, Alice. Alice coming to us from south of France. Lucky Alice. Alice Koderk is the co-founder of Atome Bakery, an innovative online bakery delivering ready-to-bake artisanal sourdough bread and pastries directly to customers' doors across BC, Alberta, and Washington. Uh, this is a great business. So welcome, Alice. We're looking forward to your stories. Next is Samantha Matsuda coming to us from Courtney, BC. She's the dedicated owner of Evolution Equestrian Co. in Courtney. She has a passion, a real passion, if you follow her social media, for all things equestrian and equine, specializing in providing top-notch new and used tack for riders and their beloved horses. So welcome, Sam. Uh, next up is Aki Kaltenbach, uh, founder and CEO of Save the Sea Foods, a plant-based fresh seafood company that creates products that have the same nutrients and flavor as seafood without the toxins and harm to the planet. And uh, they're delicious. So if you haven't tried Save to See products, um, we'll have Aki tell us where he get them, but they are delicious. So welcome, Aki. And our fourth panelist is Erin Alexander, our entrepreneur in residence and certified investor Q&A trainer facilitator. Erin helps women raise more in investments by mastering the Q&A conversations with investors. So welcome to everybody and let's get started. So I'm gonna stop share. We can see everybody. Uh, and let's start off with a brief introduction. Um, I'll have each of you briefly introduce yourself and give a brief summary of what your current funding puzzle looks like. Uh, what funding did you use to start your business? And how did you add new sources of capital to support the growth of your business? So who would like to start? Let's go with Sam. Puts your hand up first. Sam. And then you call yeah. on somebody else. <laughs> okay. Um, I can, yeah. So for me, I was working in another tax store for seven years and I wanted to go start my own because I wanted a long-term future. Might as well be working for myself than for someone else. Um, I ended up having a kid. So I started my business actually in my house, in my garage, in my laundry room, um, just doing consignment. That was a way that I could bring product in without having to put upfront money in buying stock. So that was a great way to start building. I was able to build my brand that way. And then um, it was going really well. So I was starting to put out to the universe, I need to find a brick and mortar location. And one came up sooner than I expected. So I reached out to EBC. I was able to get a business loan, which enabled to help me get into my retail space. Um, because I was on maternity leave, I didn't really have a source of income. So the banks and stuff wouldn't help me because on paper and the numbers, they wouldn't add up. But the WeBC was so great because they saw what a strong applicant I was. So they were able to back me there. Wonderful. Alrighty. Um, Thanks, we'll I'm pass so it off to Alice. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I'm Alice from Atom Bakery. Um, we created Atom Bakery in 2022. So at the time I had a full-time job and uh, that was a, a side job. So to begin, we used the, the money from our full-time jobs. I, I have a co-founder, Lucas, who's not on the call today. Um, and then quickly we realized we needed more cash flow. So our first thought was going to a angel slash friends and family round uh, to get some more working capital. And we did that in November of last year. Uh, just because it's the fastest way that we had to to find money um, and now we're hoping to raise another equity round uh, when we have proven that we can replicate the model that we're running in the US and so to be able to bridge um, until the next round of funding we did a loan with WBC and with WIOC uh, to be able to have sufficient 
funds and working capital until we're ready to raise our next round. Uh, so I'll pass it to Aki. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Aki. I'm the founder of Save the Sea. Um, so we we're, we have a manufacturing facility in Victoria, uh, which is where we make all our products um, available in 500 stores across Canada. We, my first, I have done anything and everything when it comes to finding money. Uh, we, we launched in 2019. I, I actually forgot about this. My, I, my, the very first amount of money I got was from Futurepreneur. They have this amazing program. I just, you have to be under 40 though. And I just made the, the cutoff. <laughs> Uh, and that's 15K. And then at the time it was 15K anyways, I don't know what it is now. And you mm -hmm. had to put in 15K. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then quickly after, you know, that doesn't go very far. <laughs> and so quickly thereafter, I, I raised money. Um, my first raise, I've done three raises to date. Um, my first raise was 500,000 uh, and well, equity, common shares, um, and and really primarily angels, friends, not so much family, but, you know, in people in the community uh, in Vancouver and around BC. Uh, I access, I am also a loan recipient from both WeBC and WeOC, and I access those loans relatively late in our um, funding journey, partly because the fundraising climate was a lot friendlier, you know, when I, when I did, when that was four years ago now, four or five years ago, uh, but the reason for accessing WBC money was we brought production in-house to our facility that we're now in in Victoria. And so that allowed us to, you know, there, there is some security required. And so it allowed us to access that, that money with security from our um, equipment and leasehold improvements. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned your first race. What were the next two? Um, the, the next one was, uh, again, equ uh, equity, like common shares. The third one was much more complicated. And that was mainly because of how chat that was just, I just closed that a couple months ago. And really, it was just due to the fundraising climate and how challenging it was. And I had to, it was a real mashup of mm -hmm. safes, <laughs> a convertible loan, some equity, um, but it was what I needed to do to get money in the door. Yeah, uh, good Good point on timing. You know, the difference between raising capital four years ago and raising today in this climate and just the challenge. So thank you. Thanks for sharing that. All right, so welcome to Erin. Welcome, Erin. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, you know, I um, I'm not an, an entrepreneur currently raising, but um, I am fortunate enough to be uh, an investor Q and A um, certified trader. So, you know, my main focus is really to help women uh, raise more money in investment in equity um, by, as Melanie mentioned, mastering their conversations um, with investors. So, um, you know, I. I kind of help women uh, mostly with their equity, but to overall understand their funding puzzle. Because um, as we know, women are underrepresented in this early stage investing. And um, my my mission really is to support uh, these entrepreneurs with uh, investor Q&A and other ways um, to find the funding they need in whatever aspect that is um, to develop, grow, and um, I guess initially scale up their business to whatever that is. Yeah, great. So great to have you on board. Thank Aaron. you. You did such a great job. Um, all right, let's dive in. So all of you have non-dilutive debt funding. So I want to focus on that source of capital for a moment. Uh, debt financing relies on regular payments after the funds are advanced. And so for this reason, your business has to be generating revenues to provide cash flow to cover the debt servicing requirements. So are there minimum monthly payment and then principal and interest? Um, so Aki, you already touched on how you were using debt financing to your business to um, buy equipment. Um, others, how are you using debt capital in your business? And, and maybe you want to add something, Aki. So it could be working capital, hiring staff, marketing expenses. Do you have a term loan, a line of credit, or both? 
Alice, you want to start? Sure. Um, so we, we've we used the loan um, for different purposes. About a third of the loan has gone to equipment as well. So we needed a walk-in freezer for our new facility, facility and a double chamber vacuum sealing machine. Um, so just for packaging. Then we used a third of the budget, which I think is a little bit unusual for marketing uh, mm -hmm. because our main lever of uh, growth is meta ads. Uh, because we are a 100% e-commerce business. So the only way that people find us is on the internet. Um, so for us, the, the main lever of growth is to be able to capture new customers online. So we 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 spend a considerable amount of money on, on ads, which you know has been quite tough with the, the loans process because it's not something that um, people review uh, loan applications usually see. Um, so I think that that was one different thing with us. Um, and then the rest has been to hire more staff and working capital. Great. And do you have a line of credit yet? Uh, we have a line of credit with our uh, banking, but we, yeah. we don't really use it yet. Uh, just because we're online and direct to consumer, we actually get payments from the orders before we have to ship them out. So we're lucky in the sense that we don't get that cash flow crunch with uh, getting the money from the customer. Yeah, great. Great that you have that line of credit set up for emergencies. You know, it's ready exactly. and available to go. So great, great. Um, uh, and Sam. Um, so I got the WBC loan to start my business. So that helped me bring in um, do the leasehold improvements. It helped me bring in a whole bunch more stock um, so I can have more stock. Um, I took 20 grand for that. Um, I am really careful because I am younger and I don't have the same kind of equity built up. Um, like our personal line of credit was already full. We have a mortgage and stuff. So I can't get um, more debt. So I'm also trying to be careful. I'm not overstepping my cash flow there. Um, but a lot of it is just managing my day-to-day -day cash flow of not overstepping, but still keeping up with demand um, from customers mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. A fine balance. It is. It's very <laughs> tricky. And it changes, right? Month to month, like retail and stuff, it's always changing. So it's learning how to yeah. really find the rhythm of the seasons with your business to predict that. Yeah. Great. That's, that's uh, yeah. Tricky. Um, Aki, anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I mean, I could, I don't even, I don't remember the split now. I, I received the loan a while ago, <laughs> so, uh, I couldn't tell you the split, but we do have a line of credit, okay. um, with our, just with yeah. our bank and yeah. we have other, like I have other debt as well. Um, you know, we have debt from BDC, which is a really great loan to access. That's really also low, um, low barrier. And we're also a member, member of the Coralist community as well. So um, I, I, I have other debt as well. Great. Even more sources of capital I could add to that chart, right? Coralist is a good one too. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, so some of you have also accessed grants to support the growth of your business. And I wonder if you can tell us uh, the grants that you've applied for and received, as well as your tips and best practices on how to get grant funding. I can I can go first. Um, so for the grants that we've received, I've applied to a lot of grants, but I haven't uh, received a lot yet, just because we're we're only about two years old, so we haven't had a lot of cycles yet. Um, but uh, the CDAP has been very helpful, and it's quite easy to get, uh, just to help with uh, updating. For us, it was updating our social media strategy uh, with an agency. Um, so it's, I think it's about uh, $2,000 or that anyone can get in BC um, to be able to help with the internet related um, improvements. Um, and we also, because we're part of the um, agriculture slash food processing um, area, we were also able to access a grant for um, labor. So we have a, a youth that is working with us and through the, the youth and skill uh, program, we got 50% uh, of his uh, salary reimbursed. 
Um, the only thing I want to add with that is uh, it's at the end of the term that we get the money. So you still need to have the cash flow to pay for the full salary, uh, but you'll get the money uh, one year after. Yeah, that's a good point to make. And it can be quite difficult if you don't have cash available to pay it up front and then claim the money back. Uh, but from the government's point of view or from the funder's point of view, they want to make sure that that grant that they have approved is used for the purpose that it has been approved for. And the only way that they're able to do that is to see the receipts to show what you've spent the money on. And so, unfortunately, there's not really a way around it, but uh, certainly WBC can help with funding. Great, yeah. Um, CDAP, so Canada Digital Adoption Program it was up to $2,400 and it was a great program. That's an example of a qualifying grant. And so a qualifying grant is if you meet the criteria, then you can be approved as long as there's money available in the pool that they've allocated. And I believe with the Canada Digital Adoption Program, I think that pool is getting very close to the end if it hasn't already closed. The other type of grant is a competitive grant where they you submit your proposal or your grant application and then it becomes a competitive process where they choose the the best ones or the ones that qualify and then that they deem are the best and so an example of that would have been years ago there was the women entrepreneurship strategy offered grants for a hundred thousand dollars and they had a pool but they could only give it out to x number and so it was a very competitive process. So just to be aware, if you're applying for a qualifying grant where there's a pool of money, you meet the criteria or whether it's a competitive situation. Yeah. Um, Aki, anything to add on grants? Yeah, yeah, we have also accessed all, all the grants. Um, so somewhat, so we're consumer packaged goods sold in grocery stores. So there are some, and we're food considered a food manufacturer. So by BC is, is one that we have accessed, uh, which allows you to spend on packaging and marketing and um, some other uh, trade, you know, trade shows. Um, can export, we just launched in the US. And so that's another grant that's great when you are entering a new market. Um, I don't know if it, they consider other parts of the country a new market, but the US, any other country for sure is considered a new market. Um, and then of course, all the, the usual suspects, IRAP for R&D, you know, as a plant-based food manufacturer, we are a, sorry, <laughs> in my car, so subject to who's ever around me. Um, IRAP, uh, so we've received, funding to, to go towards R&D and shred shreds another great one uh, also R&D focused but can cover a bit more that than IRAP can um, but it's a pro whereas IRAP you apply for and get the money as you spend it shred is is a reimbursement at the end of your fiscal year um, so those are some of the ones we have uh, received Great, and there's a question here in the chat on how did you find all the grants that were applicable to you? Did you have an advisor or someone source the grants for you? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, you know, we've been in business now for five years. So you kind of just, you know, learn about them through word of mouth. And um, some of them have been around for a long time. Uh, and some of them we, you know, you can apply for year year after year. I do know that there are some uh, applications, software, you know, software as a service kind of providers that, you know, will take your information and, and you know, for, for a fee, kind of spit out like pocketed, I believe is one. Uh, we have, I have never used that, but um, I hear good things about, you know. Yeah, so there are a number uh, of websites. organizations, yeah, that, um, that, that, that sort of bring together all these and try and match you. So grant matching platforms. Also, just subscribing to a newsletter from WBC and Futurepreneur, they they have a lot of information that they send you away, so you can make sure you're not uh, missing the deadlines. 
And for one of the grants, the can export, which is quite competitive, uh, we, we worked with a grant writer, um, again, from networking, someone recommended her. And that has been also helpful in finding other grants because it's her job to write grants. So she was able to give a few other names too. Yeah, great suggestions. Sam, anything to add? Sam, how um, did you find your CDAP grant? Uh, word of mouth. Uh, they also ran a bunch of online campaigns for it. Um, and I found even a lot of like digital marketing companies were pushing it because it was an easy way for them to get clients and like okay. without the investment, knowing that you're getting it back. Um, so that was really great and easy to apply for. Um, I wish I had more time to get into grants and do that type of stuff, but I have a retail business, which isn't super innovated in the way as like my other two panelists here, like they have really cool cool businesses, right? Mine is, it's a storefront, it's a retail store. It's a great community, but it's not pushing the limit in the same as others do. So there's not as much grant opportunity for me out there. Um, that being said, I did apply for the BC Small Business Awards. So essentially that's a grant because if you win, it's five grand. So again, it's word of mouth. And the biggest thing is time too, as um, I'm sure most small business people are aware especially yeah. women, we have kids, we have families, we have life outside our business, even though it doesn't feel like it. Juggling it all without the burnout is hard. So if you have the ability to do resources to be able to find grant writers, if you have a really great business idea, I would invest in that for sure. Great suggestions, great suggestions. Yeah, time, time is money. And then uh, just to recap on Sam mentioning, I'm like, competitions um go out there and try yeah, to get you know awards one. and and put yeah. yourself out because for the competitions you get great exposure as well as potentially a prize and money so that was yeah you get press either. right yes exactly I know the company who won last year they're actually friends of mine and clients and they said even just the press that they got from being in the top three finalists was worth ne worth exactly. more to them as their business than the um than the money right because it broadens the horizons, which again, will bring more customers in. And if also, if you're on your website, it'll help your SEO, because if your name is out there more places, it's going to bring you back to there. Yeah, for sure. It, it gets social marketing. All right, let's move on to equity funding from investors. So Aki and Alice, you both received funding from investors in exchange for ownership in your company. Why did you decide to use this source of capital to fund the growth of your business? Aki, we'll start. Yeah, I, why? I mean, so I raised money very early in our business. You know, we were pretty much pre-revenue. I, I, on, honestly, I, there was no other way to get money. You know, I didn't know about WeBC. I bank with RBC. There is no way. They still won't give me a loan, you know, so I just... What other option? I, I had no other option other than to go out to angel investment and angel investors. And did you know at the time it was a fairly good climate for investment? Was that part of I, your? No, no, I don't think so. I, I'd never raised money before, so it was very oh. new to me. And it took me it took me a long time. It took me about a year to close close my round. What are, you know? Hmm. Um, uh, and, that, you know, I think it's because I, you know, this is a new industry for me. I, uh, yeah, like I said, I, had, I hadn't raised before. And so it was a lot of learning along the way in terms of like, you know, uh, coming up with a valuation and, and, you know, showing, sh building out projections and, you know, building out the whole data room that you need to convince people that you are, you know, not going to blow all their money turn it into growth and value. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. I love it. There was no other way. So you just had to go make it happen. That's so <laughs> often the case, isn't it? Yeah. How about you, Alice? Um, for me, so I'm an immigrant in Canada. I, I arrived from France in 2018. So I didn't have credit score. I didn't have any family that could vouch for me for a bank. So Similarly, like I couldn't get any bank to um, 
to um, even talk with us about a business loan when we were so low in revenues. Um, so it was the only way that we could get capital as well. And we could have just, you know, waited for the money from the business to go in, but we wanted to grow faster. Um, so that's why we decided to to pull together our network and and find we found three investors and we did a safe, which was quite easy for us to do. Like there's a template online um, that you can use. And it basically says that you're giving X percent of your company for X money um, and that they won't actually get the ownership of your company before the next raising event. So currently they they just have miss from us um and that was the easiest way for us to get cash fast so we could grow faster mm -hmm. wonderful and did i hear you say you you went through your network to find your investors yeah exactly yeah you like we kind of knew who had money uh so <laughs> we just uh, went for these people and uh and also we went through our business network like uh, other companies that we worked with Mm -hmm. uh, former managers, uh, people who knew how we worked and believed in us as persons, uh, because we didn't have a lot to show for in terms of our revenue. So it was really an investment in, in us at the beginning. Um, yeah. So we, so we went for people who knew how we worked. Yeah, great stories, great stories. Well done to both of you. Um, Aaron, you're a certified investor Q&A trainer for a couple of the programs that WBC is delivering in partnership with Small Scale Food Processors Association, which both Ellis and uh, Aki have attended, as well as SVX for non-food companies. Uh, these programs are funded by the Government of Canada through the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy and the Women Entrepreneurship Women's Venture Capital Initiative programs. So current stats show that women receive less than 3% of venture capital funding. And women founders are asked different questions than male founders when speaking with potential investors. So can you tell us more about this problem and how the investor Q&A program is helping with the solution? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Melanie. As you say those stats, my kind of heart rate starts going and I get to uh, get it, get excited about trying to help that problem. Um, so, you know, as you mentioned, uh, women led companies, they receive very little of the billions of dollars of venture capital out there being invested. Um, and, you know, the stats show it's not only they receive fewer investments, but smaller amounts as well. Um, so for me, you know, the big question is like, why and how can we help bridge that gap and get more capital to women? Um, so as you mentioned, the research shows we, we know there's those subtle differences and this um, unconscious bias between um, what men and women are asked and specifically during their, you know, Q&A period after they do a pitch. Um, men are more commonly asked questions like how to win and women are asked kind of how not to lose. Um, and it's this Q&A, investor Q&A program uh, addresses this problem. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's based on years of research and uh, video observations of entrepreneur investor conversations. Um, and from that, they found that there's certain words and topics that directly correlate um, to investment. So um, you know, Aki and Alice have been through um, the program and you can see that when you talk about kind of more promotion or aspirational topics, um, you're more likely to receive the funding. And so, you know, I'm very fortunate to be part of this um, program and, and help women and hopefully receive more funding that they need to scale up and build a, a great successful business because as we know right now it's a tough market out there so whatever kind of extra tool we can give to give that upper edge um is, is great yeah that's great um just we we know that women will just answer whatever question they're asked you're thinking yeah but knowing that certain topics lead to investment um Aki and Alice how did that training influence you in your uh, speaking with investors and focusing on topics that lead to investment. Did I start? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
for me, it was very recent. I'm part of the last cohort. So I'm still enrolled to do the pitch parties. Um, okay. And I think what I learned the most is to actually dare to speak out loud. And just so there's a great software that uh, gives you prompts and questions. And then it records you when you speak. And then it tells you if you use words that you shouldn't, if you hesitate too much. Uh, so for me, the 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 best was the exercise of actually taking the time to sit down and speak about the business out loud, hear, hear or read what I was saying and see that some stuff I shouldn't be saying, uh, I should use more words. So they also give you a list of words to use to sound more aspirational, which has been very helpful for me. Um, so the, I think this is the, the value that I get from the program right now. And when I go to the pitch parties, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot more feedback also. Yeah, learning to lead the conversation and speak up. That's great. Aki, any thoughts? Yeah, I think for me, for, with any of these, um, you know, whether it's the the Q&A uh, co cohort or if, if you're part of an accelerator, which I have been and, and I'm part of many, um, it's the group, right? It's the, the hearing hearing how, you know, how other people are, are doing and what what has been successful to, for them or not successful um that's that's where i i that gets me jazzed is is yeah. hearing other folks experiences hey I mel i mel, mel, melanie i just see some people have been asking questions so i don't know if you're going to get to those at the end but just wanted to highlight it yeah thanks oh we're, we'll we'll try and get to those at the end thanks for letting me know um Okay, let's move on. I want to talk a little bit about rejection. Um, I was listening to a podcast with Bobby Reset, who's this Indigenous CEO founder of um, Virtual Gurus, who said that she, when she was raising, she was rejected by 170 investors. And so, you know, you often hear rejection when you're going either to investors, but even sometimes applying for a loan. Um, and so how do you face that rejection? And if you are rejected, how do you learn from the experience and get up and move forward? Yeah, I mean, I, anybody, I, I've been rejected so many times. 170, gosh, my number is double that. But um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I have a, I have a, a list of investors yeah. that I have spoken to and um yeah, I mean, how do you, you know, I, I, every no is one closer to yes. I mean, there's lots of things, lots of pep talks you have to give yourself. Uh, otherwise, you just wouldn't get out of bed. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, yeah, there's, well, yeah, I don't, I don't know any other way. <laughs> if you're bad, if you believe in what you're doing, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll do it. You'll, you'll do what it takes to, to, to get that, that dough in. Yeah. For me, I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Santa. Oh, for me, like, I definitely got a lot of rejections, but I also went to, like, the banks and the standard loan of credit or line of credits and standard business loans. Um, and just because of my situation, because I was on maternity leave, like, there, there was no numbers. Like, it did, that did make sense to me. So that's where it's also, but talking to your community, that's how I found WeBC. Um, I actually heard about it from my stepmom. Um, she was a doctor and she had other clients use it. Uh, so I think there's so many more resources out there that we're, you're not aware of. So the biggest thing to do is talk, talk to your community, talk to those who believe in you and will stand behind you and get what you're doing. Um, Cause that's how yeah. you, you get over that. No, because you have so many other people that you're saying yes. Yeah. Great. I totally agree with what both of you have said. Uh, very similar experience for me. And uh, I used to be in sales before. So for me, getting no's is uh, more frequent than getting yes. So I'm just trying to apply the same strategy, even though it's harder because it's your business. You you made it. So it's hard to hear criticism about it, I guess. Uh, so what I do when I feel down is I open the review page and I just read the, the good reviews from our customers. And that, that's a real pick me up for me. Fantastic. That's a good, good, good hack. Uh, a couple of questions here. Um, when you're pitching to investors, how do you get help with valuations and projections? Any, any tips there? 
Yeah, I, so depending on the stage of your business, when I, I had to, because I raised quite early, I needed a, a, there weren't so many, you know, people are like, get comps, right? Comparables, but most of those comps are public companies. You, you don't really get the valuation of private companies. Most people won't give that to you. Uh, so I just asked my lawyer, um, who is, uh, you know, a seasoned CPG veteran, advises a ton of companies from all, of all stages. And, and he just gave me the number and I just used that, which was low enough that it wasn't, you know, people didn't really scoff at it. Yeah, they can see the value. And so they're willing to Yeah. And it's not as, and it's not as easy as most. like, yeah. And it's not as easy as doing a, just a, a multiple, right? If you, if you're pre, pre revenue yeah. or very little revenue, a multiple doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And how about helping you with your presentation? Aki? Yeah, that's, I mean, that my presentations have evolved so much since I first pitched, like uh, since I, you know, I first started raising money. I think looking at other, like when you're, again, when you're part of these pitch competitions, you see other people's and you're like, oh, I like how they presented their growth slide or their, you know, product slide. And so I think it's something that evolves over time. I do have a graphic designer that I work with. And so, you know, maybe getting a, a couple samples of people who are pitching. I mean, those are not hard to find, you know, you can find a pitch of, pitch deck on the internet pretty easily and then just adapting yours to your market side. you know there's definitely some elements that are that are kind of you know yeah. market size problem solution you know 10 slides every pitch deck must have <laughs> right yeah something like that yeah yeah and, yeah, um, and that's what we always suggest is, yeah, as you said, Aki, go out and, and look at other people's pitches, watch them online and just see what kind of resonates with you and what caught your attention and, and mimic that. Yeah. Yeah. And Alice, you haven't yet set a valuation if you have a safe. Is that correct? Um, so we do have to propose a version to agree okay. on. Um, but for us, it was very informal. Oh, I basically did the calculation based on the um, EBITDA. Like there's an industry standard. You take the EBITDA, it gives you a potential valuation. And you know, because we're so early, no one really confronted us on the way that this was calculated. So I guess we got lucky with the yeah. first time. I think if we go into VCs and um, something more complex, then we would probably need a lawyer to help us out with it. Yeah, for sure. Good. Uh, okay. Uh, Aaron, any, any thoughts you wanted to add? Yeah, no, I mean, just in regards to, um, yeah, the pitches is, um, yeah, go out practice just like the Q and A and be prepared, um, and, and know what you want to talk about and have that ready ahead of time. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, let's talk about due diligence process. Um, Aki had mentioned uh, data room, but when you're asking uh, for money from somebody else, there is always a due diligence process, whether it's for your business or for a mortgage or something else. Um, how did you prepare for the due diligence process? What documentation did you need to provide? And do you have any tips uh, on ways to organize and keep track of the documents? Anybody, any tips, comments? I can go. Uh, so before the, the call, I actually looked at my folder for the WBC loan and I saw that I had 41 documents in it. Uh, so that's the number of documents that you need to submit <laughs> to be able to get the loan. Um, some of them are really easy, like picture of your ID. And then some of them took a lot of time, uh, mostly the business plan, the forecast, um, like cash forecast over three, four years. Um, so any tips, I would say, ask for the loan before you need the money, because it's going to take you, you know, two, three, four months to actually get the money in your bank account, uh, which, you know, I didn't think it would be that long. I was a bit naive when I first started. Um, so uh, for us, for instance, sorry, it does take time. It, it And it's, it's normal. Like they yeah. won't give you money if they don't, they're not sure of your business which I completely understand but because we're growing really fast we we often need stuff from one day to the next and we don't really anticipate uh, enough um, so that that has been hard on us to wait for the loan approval to come through 
Um, and so what we did is we actually use, there's a, now a, a Shopify loan that you can get. If your store is on Shopify, they will loan you money based on your sales. So they don't do any due diligence. So we were very lucky that this existed because when we we're waiting for the WeBC and the WeArc loan, we took $30,000 of a Shopify loan and that carried us through the, the next few weeks until we got the result. Great, smart. Yeah. Sam? Um, I would think a strong business plan. That's really what set, like, I was working on my business plan for years as it was just like an idea. Um, but the more you can kind of get down, organize your thoughts, really pitch to how strong of a person you are and your idea. That's where I really put most of my resources in. Um, I was lucky that I kind of had an idea of forecast because I worked at another business for so long. So I had a ballpark range of what I could do. Um, but then again, like COVID happens, life happens, things change. Um, but for me, it actually grew faster than I expected. So that's been also hard to keep up with, but it's also yeah. bad news, good news at the same time. Um, but now I'm finding it again, just trying to keep up with demand for people to, for people wanting me to bring in new brands. And of course, those opening orders are, are hard to hit. So I'm going to have to make some choices soon on bringing getting into more debt so I can grow so we'll see I I have seen that Shopify thing though so that might be promising too so I'm going to look into that there's source and more grants hopefully right more grants absolutely for hiring is good well my business is so small like it's mostly me um and I have like one or two weekend girls so I don't have a lot of staff employees um so that's where it gets hard too for some things like that. Yeah. Good, yeah. Aggie. Um, what's the, the question? Data room, uh, due like, diligence and just due, due diligence. diligence and the data and any tips for organizing it and responding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So I guess same thing. There are just standard documents that you will need, whether it's for a loan or for an investor. Um, And again, that's something you could Google, like what documents do you need in your data room? Um, Projections are, yeah, those are the most challenging often. I am not a numbers person. My marketing, my background is marketing. Um, I I feel really lucky. I have uh, an advisor on my team. Um, She she also happens to be an investor and she helps me build out my projections. Um, So that's really, you know, that's game changing for sure uh, to give me that uh, just, you know, uh, expertise that I, that I, I I don't have. Um, But I feel like a bookkeeper can do that as well. Um, Yeah, that's all I would say. And I do, I just keep it in a G drive you know, and, and make it available to whoever needs to access it. Yeah, great. Okay. And I have people in the chat asking uh, the name of your lawyer. Yeah. So I just want to, he's only food. So that's why I don't know. Like I, I work with Faskin. They're, you know, the one of the most, most well-known lawyers in the um, uh, industry. You're, I think, Melanie, you are going to share my email, so feel free to email okay. me directly. I will say yeah. he only works with CP, CPG folks, though. Uh, are you working with Ali? Yes. Yeah, Ali, okay, yeah, great. Okay, he's great. Um, so, yeah, in terms of lawyers, it's good to have a lawyer uh, to help you set up your business properly, Faskin, Osler. Um, they all have startup uh, packages, that are not too expensive. I think a thousand to fifteen hundred to get your company set up properly and can advise you on structure and if you're thinking about raising. And then they get to know you and then build from there. So um, that's a recommendation for everybody. Have a good lawyer that you know. Um, Alice, do you have anybody? <clears throat> Uh, yes, we have a lawyer. Um, I can also send you uh, the name if you share my email. I can send it to anyone. Yeah, else. if people are interested. Great. Okay. Um, I think we're getting close to the end of time. Um, let's just wrap up with one conversation, one question. 
Um, I think I'd like to ask, uh, looking back on your funding journey, is there anything that you would have done differently? Sounds like probably look at more questions. grants. Yeah, it's a hard <laughs> question. Um, Mine went quickly just because with the space that became available, I kind of had to act quick. Um, so maybe have things ready. Like we talked about the document preparation, like that's something, even if you're not fully committed, you can still organize everything, like make a folder, um, put everything together, get inspired, like videos, TikToks, Pinterest, however you want to get inspired first and organize it. That's stuff you can do without fully committing. Um, and I think grants are a bigger resource than we realize too. So network, join your local women's business groups um, and network because your community is really the true strength of your business. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, one thing that I've seen in a lot of my cohorts is if you're doing equity funding, um, make sure you ask um, for enough money to cover you for the next 18 months to two years because the last thing you want to do is close a raise and then all of a sudden you're like oh I need more money and have to start fundraising again so just really plan and that's all about kind of getting ready and getting all your ducks in a row um, that you can have that uh, runway for 18 to months to two years because you'll probably have to do another raise in that sense so yeah. ask for more than too little yeah great great and and debt financing too yes exactly make sure you ask for enough Aki um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure there's anything I would do. I would have done differently. I, uh, hindsight is 2020, of course, but I, I am, you know, I did access debt a little later in my journey and I, you know, I do think it's an, it's an important piece of the funding puzzle for sure. I think, you know, it can be scary because you, you know, they're personally guaranteed, you know, it doesn't, you do, I don't even know what size, I don't even know what, how big you need to be before you don't have to personally guarantee a loan. But um, again, if you believe in your, your, in what you're doing, um, you're, you're willing to take that risk. You're all in. Yeah. All in. Great, great, great suggestion. And Alice. Um, yeah, to um, add on to what Aki just said, for me, I don't know if it's cultural or um, or not, but having debt is uh, quite, like, it's not great in France. People hate having debt. We don't use credit cards. So for me, it was a real uh, tough conversation with myself to uh, take on the, the debt. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, if uh, you believe mm -hmm. in what you're working on and you, you think it can go to the next step, then it's the necessary uh, funding to be able to grow mm -hmm. as you're doing. So uh, I would say, yeah, be prepared, uh, have all of your forecast ready. So you know your, how much money you, you need and then you can take the steps. Um, and also what I found really helpful and I should have done sooner is join more trainings and programs and incubators. Um, Cause I, the business plan that I had ready for the loan it was thanks to a, a program that I did called uh, Farm Food Drink uh, Scale Up. Um, and without that program, I wouldn't have had the business plan. It would have probably taken me an extra four weeks to put together everything for the loan. Um, so not only do you you meet mm -hmm. other great people who have a lot of insights for you, you also get into uh, time for yourself to work on long-term things for your business that you don't take otherwise. Um, so I probably would do that sooner if I had to do it again. Fantastic. Well, we could do a whole webinar on the mental challenges of taking on debt for your business. But I think the three of you are tremendous examples of uh, taking a risk, um, having the courage to take on money, whether it's debt or grants or investor money to scale your business and look how far you've come and where you're going. You know, it's really exciting to see and we're glad that we will be able to vote for uh, Alice and Samantha on uh, Small Business BC Awards. So thank you so much. All of you, I uh, will uh, just a great conversation and I so much valuable information shared here. So um, uh, I don't know how this and.
Thank you. I just want to let you know we have a couple of programs coming up. So our palace, we will include their email addresses in the um, email that goes out. Uh, take a look at our smart programs. These are a new offering. They're on demand. They're self-paced. Uh, you just sign up at the moment. They are all free. Um, and they provide the basics in HR, financials, and strategic marketing. And there's a couple more programs coming as well. So check those out. And they're really um, great to go through and just maybe give you some tips and make sure that you've got the basics in all those key areas to manage your business. We also have a number of events coming up. Um, you can find these on our website under events, um, but we continue to uh, offer programming that uh, hopefully is relevant for you. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, connect with us, sign up for our newsletter on our website and continue to check on the programs as well as letting us know topics that you'd like to hear about. Um, if there's any questions, we uh, I can certainly stay on. Uh, please take a minute to complete the poll. Um, and we're happy to answer any questions for those who want to stick around. And to everyone else, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, Melanie. I'll see if there's any questions I can answer in the chat. Yeah, thanks, Aki and Sam and Alice. W yeah. Wonderful having nice you here. You. Really appreciate it. Uh, there's a few questions about where they can um, see some pitches in the Vancouver area. Maybe we can supply a list um, in the follow-up email, potentially. Yeah, uh, I think Startup Canada has some uh, pitch competition coming up, or you might be able to find them online. So yeah, that's what I was like. That... The summer is a little bit slower, so I, yeah. I can't think of any... September, October definitely get busier and um, the spring kind of with, you know, yeah. UBC and SFU, um, angel forums. Uh, Maria, did you have a question? Yes, sorry, it's taking me a long time to, to write. Do you mind if I talk and say loud? Yeah, go ahead. Like, uh, I have a question because I already, like, the only option that I had available at the moment is, like, asking for a line of credit. So, because I need to start in September, uh, I start uh, spending money from the line of credit. If I get the loan later on, can I repay the line of credit from the loan? Is this a possibility? Well, you would get money for your startup expenses um, and going forward. So um, technically you can't use our loan to repay other debt, um, but you would then use it to start the business, generate revenue, and then that revenue goes in to pay down your line of credit. Oh, okay. So okay, yeah, makes sense. Of, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. That's all. Welcome. Yeah. And um, check out our business loan information session. Uh, you can speak with a business advisor if you have any questions. Okay. Yeah, I already did it and I already applied for the loan. So I'm okay. just waiting for the answer. Okay. Finger great. Crossed. Great. <laughs> See you. Have a nice day. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. You too. You're welcome. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyone else? I think there's still a few people. Someone wanted to connect with you, Aaron. Yeah, I'll just give my email and then. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe the investor QA or other right. business advisors. Okay. Great job, Aaron. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank great. you, Jen. Thank you, Thank you Brandy. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.